How many seconds? <laughs> hey, back ladies and back dudes. Kind of caught off guard there. Um, welcome to Social Sunday. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, the day trip so long for week one. Michelle's persimmon dumpling pouch hacks. Uh, the thread cutter caddy. Various fabrics that I've added to my stash. The book review will be for Pillow Talk, Talk by Edita Sitar. I'll be demonstrating how to make your zipper panels wider for your project, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew so Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. <laughs> so first off, I wanted to wish uh, Rachel happy birthday. I saw in the comments that it's Rachel's birthday t today, so happy birthday to you, Rachel. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I see Donnie's watching from um, Australia, Sue from Wisconsin, Pat from New Jersey. So thank you everyone so much for tuning in to Social Sunday. A couple of things that I wanted to let you know about before we get started. So Michelle Graham is hosting a sew along for the day trip uh, cell phone wallet over in the Facebook group. So um, week one is about to get started. There's a link in the description of tonight's show for um, a direct link for Michelle's post in the Facebook group for the sew along. Here's a great, um, picture from Rock Baby Scissors about um, showing a few day trips that she made. Um, she's made a ton and sold a ton. I've seen a lot of them posted on Instagram and she sells them in her Etsy shop. Um, also, Michelle has written, uh, I think about 22 pattern hacks for the persimmon dumpling pouch. Uh, the persimmon dumpling pouch is a free pattern and video and Michelle created all these different hacks. Danny's going to put some photographs on the screen. It's a lot of photos, but I think what she came up with is really fun. So we wanted to show uh, as many as we could. Um, she made different animal versions, um, that version right there with the zipper in the front, adding um, tabs. There's another of the animal versions with the catters. That's really cute. Um, and handles. So there's all these different iterations. Michelle's posted her instructions with photographs in the Facebook group in the file section of our Facebook group. So you can find all of those instructions there right now and eventually they'll be posted on my blog and you can always find them on my website. But lots of fun ideas that she came up with and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's take on Michelle's pattern hacks. So again, that link is in the description. It'll take you over to the file section of our Facebook group and you can find um, the specific pattern hacks over there in the file section. Um, so <laughs> I took a bit of a tumble on Friday during my writing lesson. Um, looking back on it, I think I was setting, um, the horse that I ride, his name is Smudge. I think I was setting Smudge up uh, incorrectly for a series of jumps we were doing. We were jumping a course uh, with lines of jumps and angles and um, Looking back on it, the first time I sent him through, I sent him through um, not appropriately to go over a series of jumps. He made it work. The next time I made the same mistake and he basically stopped right in front of the second jump. He stopped and I kept going over his head. Um, I feel like it was almost slow motion when I was falling. It was almost like a, a somersault tumble over his head. I remember distinctly I still had the reins in my hands. And as I was coming down, I remember seeing the jump and thinking in my head, oh my gosh, am I gonna land right on this wooden jump? Um, I landed like a hair in front of the jump, kind of on my feet, I lost my balance and then I fell on my butt. And I stood up right away and, and the look on Smudge's face was like, oh no, I'm in big trouble now. So I got up, I remember touching my fingers on his, his muzzle, like oh, Smudge, it's okay. Um, it really felt like it was nothing. I got back on, we jumped again. The rest of the day I felt fine, but the next day and even still now, I, I don't know if I got whiplash in my arms when I went over his head, but my arms, I can barely move them. They're so sore, like right, especially right here, like under my armpits. Simple tasks that you normally use your arms for, like, um, like even flushing the toilet, just putting pressure down that way hurts so bad. Getting out of bed in the morning really hurts, and so hopefully, I'm feeling a little bit better today, but um, yeah, that was a big uh, shocker, like all the, the soreness um, over that uh, tumble that I took. So um, we saw Smudge today, Violet baked him some special treats, so everything's okay. But um, yeah, definitely a, a big surprise going over his head like that. 
Um, so uh, let me get over to my favorite part of Social Sunday, the notion of the week. Just as a friendly reminder, pretty much everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So um, the notion that I chose for this week is uh, sort of a thread cutter caddy. I, I feel like it would be most helpful for quilters, especially when chain piecing, um, but it, it's also useful for holding small items and it's also magnetic on the sides for holding metal items like needles. So let me jump over to the side camera and show you uh, the thread cutter caddy. Okay, so I, I threw a few wonder clips in the, the thread cutter caddy and the sides are black, so the sides are magnetic. So I just threw a couple of pins on there. The opposite side is also magnetic. There's a blade nestled in the middle of the handle and the way the blade is situated, there it's impossible for you to cut your finger on it, but it is useful for things where you need to cut your thread. Uh, maybe you're doing some hand sewing. Um, I prepared some quilt blocks that I chain piece and chain piecing just means you're you're sewing your blocks together and then continuing without breaking the thread so when you finish finish chain piecing all of your blocks um, you need to cut them apart because they're not meant to be sewn together so um, you'll just bring that down over the the blade in the middle of the thread cutter um, so easy peasy um, again not as helpful for bag making but more if you're quilting um, even quilting projects for a bag. If you're sewing a bunch of strips together for a bag, that would be helpful as well. But anyway, again, this is the thread cutter caddy and the link is in the description for um, that project. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Do you have specialized containers that you keep on your desk for holding notions? Um, the one that comes to mind for me most often, I, I have these two yellow containers that I purchased from Target. I mainly store all my wonder clips in them. I have a second one just like this, more wonder clips inside. And I keep other small notions in them that I need to grab quickly. Like I, I always have my little bodkin in there. Um, if I'm rotating out sewing machine feet, for instance, if I'm using my main foot and then swapping out for my Teflon foot while I'm sewing a bag, I'll keep the extra foot in there till the project's finished or perhaps uh, a bobbin or two. So I, I mainly keep this this cup on my desk for notions that I need immediately and then I cl usually clean up afterwards putting the bobbins in their place putting the purse uh, the sewing machine feet in their place and so on um, I, I also wanted to share I think um, I also wanted to share the last project from the new four pack video bundle we will be making the new patterns and videos live sometime tomorrow which is Monday um, I'm not sure what time yet. Uh, we still need to upload all the videos to our video hosting website and um, it's really not a quick process. It takes hours upon hours. And so we're gonna do our best to get that up quickly. Sometime Monday that will be live. I put a link to the new four pack video bundle which we've called His, Hers, and Furs just because it um, contains a variety of patterns for men, women, and also for pets. Um, that name is thanks to Pat Armbrister who watches the show. So thank you, Pat. Um, I've put a link to that four pack um, in, the, in the description for tonight's show. It's not live yet. It's listed as out of stock. We haven't run out. I just haven't been able to put it in stock yet. So sometime on Monday that will be, that will be live and available if you're interested. So I wanted to show you, I hadn't shown you the uh, triple threat briefcase yet on the show. Um, so I wanted to show it to you now. Um, this particular briefcase, um, I did sew one version in all gray fabrics to make it more of a, um, could be a possibility for men and women. This one's obviously got tons of florals on it um, and it features three zippers. So um, I use double pull zippers for mine just because it gives a little bit of more flexibility how the bag opens, but it has um, a front portion. Let me see if I can show you a side view rather a big bag okay so it's got a divider on one side on the other side 
um, what I'm calling a gadget pocket. So it's got pockets for cell phone, wallet, or, or whatever you'd like to have there. And there's also a middle section with a bunch of pockets. So um, a laptop could go in there, file folders, uh, whatever you're putting in there for um, going to work or school or, or, or wherever you're going. So I was really excited how this turned out. I'm always spending so much time on fabric selection and I'm really glad this worked out. Sometimes it's really hard to tell until the, the project is actually finished how exactly your fabric choices will look. Um, I know I already showed the um, best friend pet carrier, but I we made another one, <laughs> so big. <laughs> I made another one when we were filming the video and I'm really, um, I was super excited to use this fabric. This fabric is called Dogs by Sarah Golden. The link to this fabric as well as that bird fabric is in the description. I used pink uh, vinyl coated mesh and um, yeah, it's just really cute. I actually wish I had um, a dog to put in there. It's, it's, it, it came out great and I like the bright pink colors of it. Um, but anyway, those four new patterns and videos will have those ready for you sometime on Monday. Um, I've added a ton of new fabrics to my stash lately. I've tried to break it up in sections just so I had uh, I could space it out and have different fabrics to show you um, every time I show different fabrics on Social Sunday. So I have rather a large stack to show you today, various fabrics. So I'm gonna jump back over to that side camera and show you um, what I've added. So this one I think was called Fabric Goddess. I've linked to all these fabrics in the description. I don't know if I remembered all the names off the top of my head, but I really liked this one a lot because it was a, I like the back, the black background. I really like the bright colors and these are all sewing themed uh, words and pictures like the sewing machine and the thimble right here. So this one was really, really cute. I don't know, this was just a random fabric that caught my eye, but it's called Tutti Fruity. I just liked the bright colors and I, um, I don't know, just reminds me kind of of tie dye. And I feel like the name is really appropriate. This one's from Alexander Henry. Um, the name's escaping me. I did link to it in the description. Um, I really like the, the retro ladies on it and the, um, I don't know, poker theme over here. Alexander Han Henry al always has a lot of interesting like one-off prints. This one's a painter's palette um, from Riley Blake. I thought it looked pretty cool. It would be great for sewing for someone who's an artist, um, maybe a tote bag or a creative maker supply case to hold their art supplies. And this is another sewing um, art themed fabric line. This is called Pencil Club. And this panel print was my favorite. Let me open this up. This fabric line is designed by Heather Givens. She owns a quilt shop which we visited in Indiana called Crimson Tate. And it's a panel print. So the pencils are over here along the selvage, all the different colors coming out. I think I saw someone make um, an ultimate art organizer with this particular print. Um, I really, really love it. I love the bright colors and it's fantastic. Something really, really unique. I also purchased a quilt kit from Weeks Ringle and Bill Kerr of Modern Quilt Studio. The quilt kit um, corresponds to one of the quilt patterns in um, Modern Quilts Illustrated number 14. So I'm gonna show you all the quilts in the book um, and then I'll show you which quilt I purchased this from, this quilt kit from. Um, Danny really likes that particular quilt. So here's all the projects in the book. The project that I chose the quilt kit for was this one. I'm gonna show you another picture of it. I really loved this quilt as well. I loved, loved the like geometric look of it. This one's a pillow. And I bookmarked a few pages to show you. So this is, these are all um, pictures from the quilts, the instructions that are in this little booklet. Here's another one. And the one I chose, oh, I wanted to, I bookmarked a couple pages. Um, I feel like they're really known for choosing fabrics, choosing colors, and choosing values. So some of that is discussed in this in this book. Um, can you be can you help me become more confident assembling and editing palettes? How do I combine fabrics from different genre genres? Can I use traditional fabrics for my stash in a fresher way? And how can I break out of the color rut I've been in for years? So they talk about all these different fabrics that, that, that are assembled, why or why not they would be good choices, 
um, as far as using them all together in a quilt. And the next page, they do something pretty similar. They're talking about all these different fabrics. You started off with these three over here, how to add more fabrics, how to choose them. Um, so I thought it was really fascinating. Obviously, this is a really short um, viewpoint. But anyway, this is the quilt kit that I bought. So it looks amazing. It looks like all of these little circle details are pieced, and yet it's just the fabrics are used really cleverly in the quilt so that these are just four fabrics used in the entire quilt so I'm really excited to make this particular project it looks like it's going to be really quick to put together it's just strips and that other geometric quilt that I showed you um, this is it right here so I'm hoping to make this one as well I'm really not sure what fabrics I kind of like the the black and white view um, but I'm not sure yet so I'll have to think about that some more anyway this is um, Modern Quilts Illustrated number 14, and I've linked to all the fabrics um, in the description, so in case you're interested, um, maybe one caught your eye and you'd like to investigate further, they're all linked to in the description so you can find out more information there. So we have two new acrylic templates in, in stock in the shop. Um, acrylic templates for the Faithwell storage bins, which this is a free pattern in video. Um, three different sizes of round circular storage bins and a lot of people have actually been making one for their pets. Um, cats, I've seen some made for guinea pigs. I actually just saw someone make another one for their cat posted on social media today. And the second new um, acrylic set is for the Sheffield tool bag which is one of the four new projects. It's actually the only of the four projects that we Felt like we could make an acrylic template for based on the sizes of the pieces or um, breakage we always take into consideration if pieces are too skinny or too long that would be a, a breaking hazard so those are the two new acrylic templates links in the description um, so let's get on to danny's favorite part of the sunday show we'd like to invite all the bag ladies and bag dudes to stand proud let us know in the comments i really love um i feel like between Danny and I, we watch a lot of streaming shows, uh, videos on the internet, and I feel like the community we have going here is really, really special. Thanks to all of you. Up to an hour before the shows start on Sunday, everyone's chatting in the comments, especially on YouTube, um, saying hello to each other because they always talk week after week, and um, it's really special and really great. So thank you so much for being part of our community. So. The book review for this week is a really fun book called Pillow Talk. Lots of great pillow projects in the book. Um, I'm going to jump over back over to the side camera, show you this book. It's written by Edit Edita Sitar of Laundry Basket Quilts. 25 patterns in the book for making pillows. As you can see, some of them are represented on the front. So I'm only going to flip through a small percentage of the book because, because these are all really quick projects. Most of the photographs of the finished pillows also are um, right across from full pages of instructions. So I'm, I'm always trying to be really careful on not showing complete instructions um, on the live shows just um, out of respect to the authors of the book. So I'm going to show a few of the larger photos and then all of the photos of the pillows are also in the back of the book. So I'll show you those for sure as well so you can see what all the projects look like. So all of the instructions are accompanied by full color illustrations and text instructions. I really like this orange peel pillow over here. This is actually one of my favorites. I'll show you that one um, some more in a second too. There's also um, piece letter instructions for all of the letters of the alphabet. So if you'd like to make sort of a graphic text pillow like this ho-ho pillow for Christmas, all of the letters are included in the book so you can spell out whatever you'd like. Perhaps you'd like to write um, S-E-W for so on there, something like that. Um, that would be a great idea for the pillows. And I'll, sh I'll stop on this uh, page, have this page open for a minute just so you can see all the pillows. Again, 25 pillow instructions. Notice the ho-ho pillows here. You can fill that in with whatever text you'd like, obviously shorter words. Um, I'd have to say my favorite pillows in the book are this one right here with the, the applique circles. Um, I really love this one. I like the herringbone. I like so many of them. They're just really great projects. The orange peel. Um, and I, I really like the bright colors that were chosen for the pillows as well. So um, 
just a, a final parting shot of some of the pillows. Um, again, the book is called Pillow Talk, and there's 25 different pillow instructions included in the book. Um, oh, I also linked to our tapered corner template, which is perfect for sewing pillows so that you don't get uh, sort of pointy outy corners, nice uh, squared off looking pillows. Um, and again, I've linked to that in the description. So I have a question for you. Let me know, have you ever made a pillow before? Perhaps you've made pillows for your bed. Maybe you have some decorative pillows in your living room. I'm looking forward to making a few pillows for our new house for the living room on the couches. Danny's requesting really bright color, so I'll see what I can come up with. Perhaps I'll make a few pillows from that Pillow Talk book. All right, so the demonstration for tonight is something um, we've had requested. I've noticed in the Facebook group, some people have been requesting instructions for um, widening a zipper. So for instance, this is a Creative Maker Supply case, obviously, um, the width of the case is only the width of the zipper, but what do you do if you want to make this project but you need um, more width? So perhaps you're putting thicker things inside and instead of the width of the zipper, you need it to be, say, two inches wide instead of uh, what this is. It can hold maybe three quarters to an inch um, width of an item inside. So I have... Um, a video prepared to show you for what that would look like. So here is a case that I made and as you can see there's a fabric panel above and below the zipper. So uh, this video dem demonstration is going to show you show you how to add that to your project. So if you'd like to widen the zipper on the Creative Maker Supply Case or any other project that um, doesn't have a side panel but just has a sort of a, a zip around zipper, um, this will show you how to do that. So enjoy. Okay, now we're gonna start adding the lining main panel. So here is the top edge of my case and here's the bottom. Leave the zipper unzipped and I'm actually going to flip so that the lining fabric is wrong side out. Okay, so we're gonna start with what is going to be the top of the case, this edge right here. So just pay attention if your fabric is directional fabric. So this is for travel size and I'll show you storage size next after this. Okay, so I've got my lining main panel. I'm gonna flip it so that it's right sides together with the lining side panel. And the long edge is going to be the edge that we're going to pin first to the seam, which is one of the quarter markings. Okay, so let's pin the four quarter markings first and then pin rest, the rest of the way around. Okay, so let's go ahead and pin the other lining main panel in place. Again, really important that the long edge is against the seam. And if your fabric is directional, the top edge of your fabric, if it's directional, will be pinned to this quarter marking, which is the seam, if that makes sense. So if I'm looking at my fabric like this and I want my birds, at least these two birds, to be facing in this direction, this would make this edge the top edge of my fabric, so that's the edge that I would pin to my seam.
All right, so let's pin all of the quarter markings in place just like we did before. Pin the rest of the way around. And then let me explain how we're gonna sew this and then I'll so show you the storage size that I have pinned already also. Okay, so first, thing, first things first, we're gonna be sewing the pinned edge using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for the lining. You may find it helpful to leave little clips about an eighth of an inch high wherever there's a curved edge, and you can do that with all four corners and then the same thing with the opposite side as well. And let me pull out my storage size so that I can show you. It's already been pinned, but as you can see, I've got my lining pieces pinned right sides together, I've lined up the quarter markings, and I've got my other side pinned as well. Okay, there's one more thing that I need to mention before we go over it and sew this. For the lining, we need to leave an opening about three or four inches wide along each end. So I'm just gonna draw myself uh, an opening, kind of that's serving as a reminder to leave that opening. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other piece as well. If you're making storage size, you'll leave that opening. You can choose which side to leave the opening on, but I recommend leaving the opening along a straight edge so that it's easier when we turn the fabrics and finish the, the case. Okay, I'm gonna sew with the side panel against the bed of my sewing machine. And remember, we're sewing the lining with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And as I come to the curved edges where the corners are, I'm just gonna sew slowly and periodically stop just so I can make sure my fabric is smoothed out so I'm not sewing across a pucker or a bunch of fabric that's bunched up. And you'll repeat that process to sew the remaining lining main panel in place. Okay, now we're going to trim that seam that we just sewed approximately in half and go ahead and just leave the opening as is. And there's no need to measure, eyeballing it is fine. Okay, and you'll do th the same thing with the second lining main panel as well. Okay, so let's add the exterior main panel with the handle. Okay, so if you're using a directional fabric, you'll just want to verify really quick which is the top and the bottom edge. So for mine, I'd like this to be the top edge right here. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that down and place the second half to the inside. So this is the edge that I'm going to be sewing my handle piece to. So on the travel size, the long edge is the edge where the seam will be. And also, if your fabric is directional, the top edge is going to be pinned 
to the edge with the seam. Okay, so let's line up all the quarter markings first. And then we'll pin the rest of the way around. This time we're going to be doing one main panel at a time as opposed to when we attach the lining, we pin both of those lining pieces at once. All right, let's pin the rest of the way around. And then if you find it helpful, take your scissors and leave little clips wherever there's a curved edge, just like we did with the lining. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. The difference is that for sewing the exterior, we're gonna be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is different than what we did with the lining. Also, we don't need to leave an opening like we did with the lining, so we're gonna sew all the way around the entire outer edge. Okay, so go ahead and leave clips with your scissors wherever there's a curve, and we'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew using that quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so to sew the travel size, it's the same process. You want to make sure that the edges of the handle are not on the same edge where the side seam is. So again, here's, here's my handle on either side, and here's the seam on the side panel. So you'll pin that, again, using the quarter markings, and sew using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and that's if you're using the storage size. Okay, so let me show you what to do before turning everything right side out through the opening in the lining. So again, here's my lining fabric, here's my exterior fabric. We're gonna tack down the seams to each other, so that means I'm gonna push this middle seam, I'm gonna squish that in the middle, and I'm gonna pin the exterior and the lining seams down just like this. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. So we're gonna sew basically just where the straight edge is from this wonder clip to the next one, which I'm gonna be placing right here. We're gonna be sewing using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, so it'll be to the outside of the seam. And then same thing on the other end as well. Again, push this center portion in the middle, and then line up the fabrics. And again, this will be sewn both of these two edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Now you'll be able to add a wider side panel to any project that you're working on. So I'm going to be answering your questions live in just a minute. So if you have any sewing related questions, questions about a notion or tool or general bag making questions, go ahead and ask your question right now in the comments on either Facebook or YouTube. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the two winners of last week's giveaway. Um, Colleen Yarnell and Gypsy's mom have both won um, the upcoming new four-pack video bundle, so congratulations to you both. Um, Danny's going to be posting some questions on the screen. He's been collecting questions all throughout the show, and I'll get to as many questions live as I can. All right, Karen says, are you supposed to put thread where the wonder clips are? Um, That's not really oh, in the, no. okay. The, the question was about this thread cutter. Um, if you'd like to put, uh, it doesn't, 
at least for the chain piecing that I showed in the uh, first part of the show, it doesn't actually, um, there's not actually thread remnants that are falling in here, although it, it's possible if you wanted to put scraps or threads in here, you could instead of the wonder clips. I just put some wonder clips in there to show that you could actually hold notions. Um, with the chain piecing, it just cut the thread in half so there wasn't any remnants, but um, you certainly could put scraps in here if you'd like to. Someone else does it have a replaceable blade? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Danny said there was another question if there is a replaceable blade available. Um, as far as I'm aware, there isn't. Uh, it doesn't open up. The handle doesn't open up at, at all, so I don't think you'd be able to replace it. Um, I'm assuming it would last a while. I've seen other thread cutting items like um, a ring that cuts the thread and they last quite a while because I've had that ring for some time. Lori says, Sarah, do you have a favorite long arm artist or do you do your own quilting? So um, I've done my own machine quilting in the past for quilts I've made just for personal use. Um, I have sent quilts out to be uh, professionally long armed. Um, Sari Diddy, um, she has a great Instagram page. Um, that's probably one of Danny's favorite uh, sewers or quilters to follow on Instagram. Um, Quilt Queen, um, and that's quilt and then queen with a, a K, so K W E E N. Um, who else, Danny? Angela Walters is a fantastic long armor. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch out there. Um, Karen says, how is the rotary cutter sharpener working out? Um, I guess I'll have to follow back up with you on that. I did have uh, my employee start using it for testing the blades out. Um, he probably hasn't used it long enough, but um, I'll let you know. He's definitely got it down there in the studio. Um, Holly says, how much will the tool case templates be? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, for the Sheffield tool bag templates, um, it might have been around $25. I don't remember. I know the Faithwell storage bin was a little bit more expensive than the tool bag. Um, the pricing honestly just depends on how many pieces, how large the pieces are, um, if there's additional cuts in them, such as, you know, the Faithwell has additional um, marking cuts in the middle of it. Um, all those things uh, dictate the prices on the templates. Katie says, how would you calculate the amount of fabric to add to the panel on the zipper? So that's a great question. Actually, I was thinking of that when uh, we were showing the, uh, the video. So to calculate how much fabric you need, uh, so for instance, I'm gonna use this Creative Maker Supply Case as an example. So in the pattern for this project, I tell you exactly how long to cut the zipper, and then there's also a fabric panel. So you know both of those measurements. Um, you just need to subtract the seam allowance from each end. So in this particular project, the seam allowance was a quarter of an inch, so you just subtract a quarter of an inch by basically four because there's four edges. There's two edges for the zipper that you're sewing and two edges for the fabric. So you would just add the length of the zipper plus the length of this fabric tab minus one inch, and that would be um, the length that you'd be cutting the fabric plus the seam allowance. So um, the seam allowance would be half an inch. So um, that measurement add a half and that would be um, the length that you would need for uh, the fabric that you would need to add for the project, the fabric that's um, above and below the zipper. Mary says, what is your favorite thread for making a bag? So I generally use Orofil 40 weight thread for all my projects. I do have some Orofil 50 weights in my stash and if I'm searching for a certain color or trying to get close to a color, based on my fabric. I'll go with the 50 weight, but I prefer the 40 weight. Um, it's 100% cotton. Um, I've had questions in the past on if polyester thread is okay for bags. Polyester thread's fine as well. Um, I've used both in the past, and I've, me personally, I've never had any bags break or seams rip or, or anything like that. So um, whatever your personal preference is completely fine as far as thread goes. Beth says, Sarah, how do you find your new fabrics? Do you have a website that you browse regularly to find new fabrics? So I do have a few favorite online shops, um, although I get um, tons of newsletters for fabric shops. So if I'm online or on social media and I find a fabric shop that I like a lot, for instance, Stash Fabrics, I'll sign up for their newsletter. Um, also follow them on Facebook. So then Facebook and also Instagram. So then when they have new fabrics, oftentimes they'll show the new fabrics 
in their newsletter and on social media and that's um, a really great way how I find out about different fabrics so that I can add them to my stash and share with you on the show. So definitely suggest signing up to a newsletter and sign up to a bunch of them. So I probably get newsletters for uh, maybe 15 to 20 different shops. I also follow them on social media and um, it's just an easy way to keep up to date because uh, with so many designers and so many fabrics, oftentimes coming out with two to three lines a year just for a single designer, um, it's hard to keep track even for myself. And so signing up for those three things is a really good way to keep track. Linda says, sewing machine, you seem to have very little trouble sewing through multiple layers. If I'm having trouble, could it be that I need a new machine? Um, honestly, it depends. I before I had before I got my Juki, which I've been sewing on since 2013, I did have a less expensive uh, brother sewing machine. I think I purchased it for about $120. I was sewing all the same bags on that machine. Um, the airplane bag, which is a big bag with lots of layers, and um, some of the interfacings are heavier. So I was able to accomplish that on a um, less expensive machine. So it doesn't necessarily mean you need a, a really expensive machine. Um, having trouble with layers, um, it might be ma the machine or it might be that you need to try a couple of other things to get things going along. Um, a new needle, perhaps sewing with a walking foot to deal with lots of layers. So there's a couple other things you can try um, before chalking it up to your machine just can't do it. But um, there's certainly less expensive models that can sew through lots of layers as well. Iris says, what level are the new patterns, beginner friendly or advanced? So I've always had a hard time categorizing um, different skill levels for my patterns, especially now that uh, we have videos. We've been doing videos for three years now. And um, I feel like especially with the videos, um, pretty much just about anyone can accomplish any project that they set their sights on. Obviously there's projects that are quicker and involve less um, tricky parts than others. For example, this creative maker supply case that I showed you um, is probably like a two to three hour project. Um, maybe a project like uh, the briefcase that I showed you earlier. Obviously, you know, comparing the two together, this one's a lot easier uh, and a lot faster to sew. Um, I would say out of all the projects, I'm not sure if I could reach it from here. Let me see if I can grab it off the shelf. There we go hooked up to a microphone. <laughs> uh, I would say out of the four new projects, the Sheffield tool bag is definitely the easiest uh, by far. It's, um, even though it is a bag that looks like it has curves, it's basically all straight sewing. So I found this one to be the quickest sew and also the less, um, I don't know, just went by much faster when we were filming the video. So again, that was the Sheffield tool bag. Um, is it possible to reduce the size of the pet carrier since the metal frame is a specific size? I have a four pound Pomeranian, that bag looks huge for her. Actually, um, I put this over here. Um, the, the original version of the pet carrier that I made, I know it looks huge, especially next to my head, but um, Violet claimed the original one that I made using green fabric for our bearded dragon and she's, um, I don't, I'm not good at converting grams to pounds, but she's she's about 730 grams, so um, a very light and smaller animal, and that she's going to be using that carrier. Um, the issue, as you mentioned, and as you spied with the metal frames, the pet carrier has metal frames, which, um, let me just grab the carrier again. There's metal frames in the sides of the bag, so there's a metal frame here, and there's another one here, and um, when you open up the, the zipper, having the frames there makes the bag uh, sturdy and stand up and not sort of collapse over your pet. So for safety wise, that's why I decided to add the frames to that particular project. Um, I suppose you could reduce the size, but then you wouldn't be able to use the frames. So I guess you'd have to decide um, how important the having the frames in the bag are to you. Uh, Renee says, do you know of a fabric site that has a lot of different patterns of ripstop material? Um, I've purchased ripstop before. I think it's the website's called a ripstop shop. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but if that's, if that's totally off base, feel free to email me and I can get you the, the correct link. I, I use the ripstop for 
um, some grocery bags that I made and they also have different thicknesses for, I think I saw the examples on their website, um, tents and camping gear. So all a, a huge array of different thicknesses of the ripstop. Donna says, did you say the four pack would be available to order tomorrow Monday? Yes, that's correct. We'll have it, um, I don't know what time tomorrow Monday, um, but sometime by the end of the day, um, it will be live and available. Um, Elizabeth wants to know where can I get the Greenbacks wallet? So uh, we have that uh, PDF pattern available on our website and you can find it at sosweetness.com. Um, on our current website, we have a graphic in the middle of the page, um, uh, sewing patterns. <laughs> That's the one you wanna click and you'll find it there. Um, I, I did mention in the past that we were working on a new website. Uh, the new website is not ready. And I arbitrarily decided on Friday, if the new website was not ready uh, by Friday, that we'd just go ahead with releasing the new patterns on the current website. So that's what we decided to do. Um, I'm honestly not sure when the new we website will be set. We're kind of depending on other people here for that portion of the work. And so uh, hopefully soon, but we didn't want to keep delaying with the new patterns. And so that's why um, if you take a look on the site and check for that new four pack, it's on our current website. Um, Stephanie says, Sarah, on the binary pouch, can you tell me where you got the leather cord you used on the ones in the sample? I love it and it looks so soft and pliable. So I actually used, um, it's actually like a faux suede um, cording. I used it on the Creative Maker supply case as well. Um, and it's really great because it doesn't fray, so you can just cut it to the size you need. I purchased it on Etsy. Off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of the Etsy shop, but I'm sure I can find it in my previous purchases on Etsy. So if you'd like to email me, I can get you the direct link to that shop. Otherwise, um, I'm assuming you'd search for maybe suede cording, something like that. Um, Kim says, do you use only 40 weight cotton or use 40 weight polyester at any time? How does it hold up with using the bag or washing the polyester thread? So um, I do use polyester thread for garment making because I, um, in the past, I made a lot of garments using quilting cottons or things that were similar, and so I was using the same thread that I was using for bag making, and I found that, especially for fitted dresses, cotton thread is not good because um, I remember one time, I think I was wearing a very fitted dress, so form-fitting, and I think I either bent over or I stretched for something, and the side of the dress kind of, I heard the stitches pop, so after that happened, I only used the polyester thread for, um, garments because uh, the polyester thread will pretty much never break. Um, I don't even know, I can't even remember the last time, honestly, I used polyester thread for a bag though. It, it's got to have been eight to ten years ago, so I've only used the, the Orifil 40 weight cotton thread for bag making. Hopefully that helps <laughs> answer things. Dawn says, is there an album for the pre-sew day trip so long? Um, I'm honestly not sure. Danny, is Michelle watching? Yes. Okay, maybe Michelle can uh, comment the answer to Don's question. Danny will watch for the follow-up comment and we'll post it on the screen. Um, Corey says, have you done any work with cork? Uh, yes, tons of stuff. Um, I like especially using it for straps and bottom panels and accents. Um, it can be used for a whole entire bag, but I feel like um, I like to be a little bit um, economical with my materials and um, I really like how, I'm trying to think if I, oh, here's a good example. So this is the Renegade bag and the white um, accents and trim and handles. This is white cork fabric. So um, as I mentioned, this is kind of generally how I like to use the cork, um, just certain features of the bag and then I like to pair it with uh, a quilting cotton or in the case of that particular bag of canvas. Um, Michelle says, yeah, so um, there should be a, an album for the pre-sew for the day trip sew along in the Facebook group and you can find that if you click on, I'm trying to think of, it might be different on a cell phone, I know on my computer, if you go in the Sew Sweetness Facebook group, click on photos, um, there's a like a sub link near the top um, and one of them is album, so that's the one you want. Karen says, will you be getting rainbows in different uh, zipper tape colors? Um, I'm honestly not sure, so we have zipper tape uh, zippers by the yard rainbow zipper coil in black, uh, white, and sort of a rainbowish looking zipper tape. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see different colors like pink, blue, green with the rainbow zipper tape, uh, uh, coil with the rainbow coil. Um, speaking of which, uh, 
the price for tonight is zippers by the yard. So let me see if I can show you an example of the rainbow coil. I'm not sure if you could see. Yeah, I think you could see through the bag. So um, the rainbow coil is uh, a coil with pink, blue, and yellow color to it, as opposed to our our other zippers by the yard, which uh, right now we just have the silver continuous solid silver coil. So um, the, <laughs> the giveaway prize for tonight is two bags of zippers by the yard. So tons of zippers, a bag of zipper pulls, and all you need to do to enter the giveaway is to answer my question, which is, so go ahead and type this question in the comments wherever you're watching the show, either on Facebook or YouTube. What is your favorite sewing tool? So the sewing tool that I use every single time I sew are Wonder Clips. I even use these Wonder Clips when I'm making quilt blocks so instead of pins. I just use the Wonder Clips because I'm so used to using them. Uh, I'd have to say my second and third favorite tools. I really love my precision turning tool. It's a metal rod with a sort of a, a rounded ball at the tip. Really good for turning fabrics right side out, poking out the corners. It can also be used as a stiletto. Um, so when you're s sewing through curves, it can hold your fabric so you can keep your hands out of the way. Um, I really also love my easy point and turner, which I don't have one easy reach, but it's really great for probably like five or six different sewing tasks in the sewing room. So those are my three favorite notions. So um, let me know yours in the comments. Thank you so much for watching Social Sunday. I had a really great time. I hope you did too. Um, I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.